Hey everybody, I'm Suzanne and in today's video, well, it's a painting of a landscape and it was inspired by my walk this morning. Now Singer and I get up pretty early. We get up like at, you know, 6 a.m. and we're out walking by 10 after. And uh, so we were some part on our, we, got, we get a couple miles in and I'm not really sure, maybe after one mile this, this occurred and we saw this beautiful sight of these trees. And I loved how the morning light was illuminating only the top portion of the trees because the sun was, you know, still coming up. <laughs> so it wasn't catching everything. And I just thought that was interesting. So that's what we're going to paint today. So if you are my subscribers, as always, thank you so much. And if you're not, consider subscribing. And you may want to also consider becoming a member here on my channel where we'll get into some fun stuff. We, uh, you know, I like to do shout outs and uh, holler at everybody. And uh, we'll, we get, we're going to be doing some more live streaming and some really fun stuff together. So join the fun and come support me here on my channel at, by becoming a member. And you can also give me an extra uh, a little, a little thanks. You'll see down below, and I believe it's like right there, <laughs> you'll see a little heart with a little dollar sign. And you can go ahead and hit that and give me make it rain all up in here and it'll be Again, I appreciate all that too. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this little landscape. Here's our palette that we're gonna work with um, to do this little tree piece. So I put out some sap green and I put out some gold green. This is Richardson's gold green. This is Michael Harding's sap green. Then I have Michael Harding's um, Van Dyke brown, ivory black, and this uh, those are Michael Harding. This is Winsor Newton's Payne's gray. I have Italian brown ochre and uh, French yellow ochre, both Michael Harding. I have more titanium white. I have cerulean blue, ultramarine blue. These are all Winsor Newton. I have, okay, ultramarine violet, pale violet, king's blue. These are Michael Harding. I have Van, uh, ooh, Payne's gray, Winsor Newton, and again, more titanium white Winsor Newton. So. This is what we're going to start with. This is going to be a fun piece, I think, for me. And, uh, you know, I'm just really wanting to capture light. So let's see how we can knock this one down. So, okay, this is our setup today. Uh, I'm going to be working off my iPad and the beautiful colors that I captured this morning on our walk this morning. Of course, I love contrast. Everybody knows that. But I also love the light. This was about 6, not even 6.30 a.m., so this tree was in the west and it's catching the eastern light and it's, you know, it's still early morning. So it's almost the sunrise that it's catching that light. So I really love, love, love everything about this when I saw it. I just was like, boom, that's what we're painting today. Um, the substrate is a 9 by 12 super slick um, cradled panel. Here's our palette. And then I also have my other monitor over here. And this is what we're going to work with today. So let's jump in and see how far we can get. I'm gonna move this around for just a second while I'm doing my loose sketch because my uh, monitor over here is not really working too well for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my, my reference kind of over here to the side. And I'm going to use a very large brush. This is a number eight Rosemary Evergreen pointed round and I'm just going to kind of lay out where I think things are going. So uh, of course I want to have a little bit more sky and I'm going to suggest the, 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 the top of this tree is like here and I don't want to, I don't want to pull it all the way to the edge. Um, I may change my shape again. This is so much about just the light that I was seeing, and I loved it. Um, so I'm just trying to get a very loose sketch of what I want to accomplish. And I'm gonna put uh, more bushes and trees down here. I'm just going to suggest some things here. I, this was all on my walk this morning with Mr. Singer and I, and we do see some beautiful things in the morning, and sometimes, that's where the inspiration for a lot of my pieces come from. One of the questions I have gotten from one of my, and I, and it's, she's not the first one to ask this question, but um, uh, Barbara Page, who is one of my um, members on my channel, 
um, asked me about where she could find my references that I use. And the truth is, not all of my references are available for several reasons. Some of them are ones that I have permission to use, but I do not have permission to share. And they may not be pictures that I took myself. So in those cases, I can't always share those, those references. Um, and that's the truth. The other thing is that oftentimes my paintings are a result of more than one reference. Um, I may have, um, um, I may work with the sky with one and, and a, um, just something else from another. And so I don't always have an exact reference. If you follow along on the last video that I did of the landscape, uh, using, you know, mixing my greens. That one kind of just came from my head. It came from um, some other, um, um, just other things that I had seen that I thought would be pretty. So it wasn't really a, so there wasn't really anything to share, honestly. And I, I so that's why I don't always have something for you to see. Now, okay, I am already gonna go off my original picture, but this particular photo reference, I will be able to share simply because um, this is mine. <laughs> I took it this morning on my walk. I'm gonna raise this up a little bit more. So this is why I'm just working with a little bit of paint. It really doesn't matter what color. I'm just kind of sketching it. So it's mainly uh, a lot of paint thinner and I'll be able to get the, the shapes um, a little bit more um, exact as I move through this piece. I'm just gonna start with, believe it or not, I'm gonna start with some of my lights this time just to block them in. And so I'm gonna take a little of the gold green and mix a little bit of the Italian brown ochre and put in some areas like right through here um, because I want to be able to capture the light. So I can put the darks in and this is a very slick substrate. So being that it's a slick substrate means that um, I'll be able to uh, get the details and I, it will kind of be slickery, <laughs> for lack of a better word, since it is such a slick surface. Um, I just want to be able to get the shapes in. And uh, you know, I'm letting the tip of this brush do the job. I'm not really so much of this and I could just really be thick with my um, strokes because a lot of there's a lot of filling in that's going to happen here I wanted to get the shapes and since this one a lot a lot of this is all about the contrast anybody knows I like my contrast Anytime I can see darks playing against lights, I love it. It just lights, it just sets me up. And I'm just kind of moving through this. I'm just kind of suggesting. Remember, there's gonna be a lot of little detail things that will happen later, but I'm just really getting the shapes down. Now this is a this is a tree that's actually in my neighborhood, and it's on the back side in, of my neighborhood. So by the time Singer and I get around to this spot, the sun has already risen, um, as you can see. Um, when we leave my house, it's just coming up, and sometimes I get some really pretty cloud um, and sky shots with the sunrise um, in the morning. But. Um, this was, this was already on our walk, and sometimes we, well onto our walk. Sometimes we see um, some really interesting, we see deer, we see other wildlife, and it's, it's kind of exciting. Okay, basically it all gets cool from this point down. So when I mix my colors, um, I will be mixing my cool greens and my warm greens, because that, this is very much that kind of piece. Okay, and I'm just gonna go ahead and suggest this is another little pine tree. Now, in the fall, when we're walking or when it's, you know, kind of closer to winter time and it's dark at 6.30 or whatever time we're out here, 
It's usually about six. I'll have to look. I can, I can tell from the timestamp on the photograph what time this was. But, um, um, we will hear the owls, and they always come from this tree in particular. I can always hear uh, great horned owls, and um, that's kind of exciting. Now, when I'm just kind of blocking and stuff at this stage, oftentimes my eyes are closed. And I'm gonna stop right there on that at this point. And, uh, because everything else is going to start getting cool. So I'm gonna take the sap green, and I'm going to mix a little of, um, let, me, let me move this over here. I might be able to put this here so you can see the mixing. And I am losing my, <laughs> I'm losing, my color there is just falling down. Okay, that's the Payne's gray, I believe. Okay, so I'm gonna take sap green, a little ivory black, a little bit of brown, a little bit of Prussian blue. Forgot that I put Prussian blue down. Yeah, that this is these are all Michael Harding paints. I'm just gonna take this color and kind of suggest that it's under here. There's some other stuff. See, I can't really get too too crazy here because um, I've got to do the sky. But I'm just trying to establish where a lot of my dark values are gonna be. And so oftentimes when I'm first starting a piece like this, my eyes are closed. And knowing where your light source is coming from is really helpful. Now, in this case, the light is, is directly on top of it, is right because this was um, the sunrise, basically the sunrise light. Um, the front of the tree was really getting hit pretty nice. So I'm just kind of moving around here. There's a lot more that's gonna happen, but for now, because a lot of the shape, shape may change a little bit once I start putting some sky in. And there's going to be branches and things like that too to come. And now this looks like a really weird way to start off a piece perhaps, but, and it could be. It could be a cool, super weird way. Um, being that this is a slick surface, I'll be able to use my paint um, scraper to get in my uh, trunks and stuff like that. So I'm going down through this and really just popping this in dark because that's what I see. Right in here, there's two pieces here, right under here. There's something kind of connecting these areas here, and I'm just going to do that. Everything back here is really dark. So I'm just using the side of my brush, just kind of getting this in there like that. I know that looks weird, but I'm a weird girl. What can I say? All right, so I also see there's dark areas here. And there's all kinds of dark areas right in here. And I'm letting the point of the brush do the work. may kind of fool with this a little bit. I don't think I want, there's another tree over here. I don't think I want it. And so this is where you take your artistic license, but I will, I want it all to be dark down here. So I'm not really sure what's gonna happen. Not really sure. There's gonna be, and I may actually put some, you know, even though this is in a neighborhood, <laughs> there's a house on either side of these trees. I may be changing it up a little bit. Now that's the thing, that's what I do with a lot of my work, is, is uh, I use the inspiration from something I've seen in nature and then I change it to apply to a neat painting. And there's gonna be lots of little windows in here, but we'll get in there. I'm not really sure where it's going yet, to be honest with you. I'm gonna take a little ivory black and we will be able to really get in here and do some more stuff here, but I just wanna get kinda establish this. Let's go ahead. I may expedite it for the for the sky a little bit. 
but I will tell you, if I'm gonna mix the sky, I'm gonna switch my paintbrush. I'm going to use a filbert, and I have several different photos that I took. So this is the sky directly above the tree, and you can see, if you're looking, <clears throat> you can see that there is definitely the, the colors change. It's a lot, um, you know, we've got the cobalty blues here, but you've got a lot of ceruleans and these usually really pretty clouds. And I really want to capture that. Um, now I took other pictures of clouds on my walk this, um, that morning, uh, this morning. And um, I, I may change my clouds up a little bit. I may work from one to the other, but I actually, now that I'm looking at this, this is how I saw it and it was really beautiful. So I may go ahead and capitalize on that. I'm mixing the sky color using cerulean blue and titanium white, and I'm gonna go ahead and throw that down. I also added a little bit of um, ultramarine violet onto the palette. And that's what's giving it a little bit of the purple smoothing everything out with my nice fluffy 279 series brush and adding my clouds. Now I did add a little bit of the Brilliant Pink by Michael Harding so I can do the pinked up areas of the clouds. But that's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of popping everything down and I'm using a pretty soft brush to do it. So we've basically got a sky in. There's probably gonna be a lot of changes to the sky, but we've got a sky in. And what I've gotta do now is start to really work on my shapes of my tree. Now, again, this piece is about contrast for me. So I'm going to mix a green. It's gotta be a pretty dark, warm mass of green, and it's gotta be a little bit more opaque. I used just kind of green gold to just pop that down, but it's gotta be, I'm going to go with a little bit of a darker version, a little bit more opaque version of this color. And I'm mixing Van Dyke Brown into this. Now, of course, Van Dyke is also a semi-transparent color. This um, Italian brown ochre should be an opaque color, I would assume. Um, you know, but I don't know, and I don't have my glasses on. So my glasses on and take a look because I need this to be stronger, a little heavier. And um, now it's also a semi transparent color, so we are going to have to kind of think about this for just a second. I'm making a good color here, but it's going to have to be. I could I could add a little chromium oxide, and that would help. So let me see. So I added a little chromium oxide to the mix here. Um, I need a little bit more opacity, and I'm going to, yeah, that's gonna do it. I can feel it. Now that's not to say that I'm not going to add lighter colors on top, but this is going to be a pretty good, I would need a mid-tone, and I want it to be the more, the warmer mid-tone. Okay. Now, for my dark, I am actually going to take ivory black and uh, Van Dyke brown. I really wanted to do because <laughs> you know I wanted to do it so I'm gonna grab I have a uh, this happens to be well it was a complimentary brush but it's a Shiraz pointed round probably like a three or four this is an older brush and it was given to me so I don't really know what it is so let's see yes I still need my opacity and I can always add to this 
So when I can, let the top of the brush do the job. some other colors on top, but I'm just, just kind of. Let's see. Just letting the tops of the, little bits of the, this brush do the job. I can always go in and add more dark values because you know dark values anybody who knows me knows my students even tease me about it all right I'm popping that right in there Just moving through. And I, I should do this as quickly as possible because this piece has to be done today. I am really wanting this to be a, this is really a study. It's something that I saw, but I'm gonna go ahead and be, <laughs> full disclosure here, uh, transparency. I didn't know what I was gonna be painting today. I really didn't. And um, last week, you know, normally I'll have my videos are um, completed, or at least the the, the painting that I'm doing is completed the week before. So I usually finish one on a, on a, like a Thursday, Friday. Then I work on the video over the weekend. And, you know, and then by Monday, I'm just doing lots of little, I'm just kind of knocking out the little details or whatever. And then by, you know, so Wednesday, when you see it, it's all, you know, it's all been done. It's all, I hadn't even started anything, didn't know what I was gonna do until I saw this on my walk this morning. And um, this is what, you know, I just grabbed it, said, Let, that's what we're doing today. And again, this is so much about light and contrast. That's what I saw. So sometimes I work a little bit backwards from what I normally talk about. You know, usually I start with my dark values, work from my dark cool values to my lighter warmer values. But today I'm kind of working a little bit backwards because I really want to establish this color and these shapes and the predominant, um, in the reference that I'm seeing, it's this color. So I don't want to, and since I'm trying to do this a la prima, I don't want to, um, I don't, I don't have time for fooling around with it. I don't have to, um, I'm painting with a more direct method, if that makes sense. So I'll paint my darker colors in around it. And I have two, you know, two references. I have a reference over here and a reference over here. Uh, I have one to my left and right. The reason I'm using two today is because the, col the colors on my monitor over here are a little bit off compared to the way I see it over here on the, on the left. Um, and I really want to try to stay as true to what I saw. I'm still working with my eyes semi-closed. <laughs> and the reason I'll do that is so I can only see what I need to see. So you can see I got a lot of filling in and corrections here on this, on like any of these areas. And that's okay do it. And if I see that it's a little bit more solid, you know, it's okay for me to just go ahead and plop it in there, then work on the little pieces. Understanding the opacity of paint is really important, I think. Um, 
and knowing how it's going to manipulate, how you can manipulate it on your canvas as you go. Because had I not, you know, added the chromium oxide here to help with the opacity, it, it wouldn't behave this way. I need it to be thick and full and non-transparent. <laughs> so, but knowing when to use a transparent color is important too. And I, I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm still learning. I always like to experiment and learn more about color. I remember it was Michelangelo that said, I am still learning. And he was 89 years old when he said that. I always wonder, how do they know how to attribute an actual quote to an artist? <laughs> that's, what I, that's how I always heard it, folks. And let, the, let the ends work a little bit for me here. And I do want to, you know, my, in my reference, the, the tree goes off to the edge, and I don't want to, to do that here. So you can see I, where I'm going to do corrections, and it's good. I'm always trying to see where I am on this piece. There's a piece right here. I have a lot of people that are walking around outside, and people that I know who wanted to come by and say hey. And and. I have my, I have my, I'm closed today. I have my closed sign up. Hoping that people kind of respect that I'm trying to get this done. And, you know, a lot of people just like to come and hang out. And just say hi, you know, what's going on? What are you working on? And that's fun. But not today. Today I got to get this work done. Okay. Now I probably won't pull this down too much further. I'm going to go ahead and pop this, the larger portions of this down, but I have a lot of dark values and a lot of cool values that I have to put in. And even though this is a little bit darker than I want it to be, it's a good starting point. This color I'm talking about, this, this combination of chromium oxide, green gold, Van Dyke brown, Italian brown ochre. Just kind of like lift up on it a little bit there. And I can always go back and add more too. But the the truth is, even with this darker value back here, even this is going to be a lot darker. Even though this is the lighter value. I do need this to be more intense. All right, so we're going to have a trunk in there. I'm going to switch to the other tree. tip of this brush even though I have this this paintbrush is really loaded I mean like too too loaded probably but I need it to be it's a little goopy but I could still I could still make the goops work for me <laughs> see the goops are working see how I mean this is really a chunky this is a chunky load, <laughs> but it's okay. I am still managing, you can see, just barely touching the canvas or the substrate. This is a gessoed panel, but this is a lot heavier here. I'm gonna take that out, I've got I'll put the dark values where I need to have them in here. It's funny, I, from where I initially went with this tree, it's a little off. That's okay. Let 
those little chunky values, those little chunky bits work for me here. Nothing says that I can't go back with my blue color, sky color, and add some more, more things in here. This is, actually this needs to come out. I wish you can hear the music that I was playing. I, I always turn my music down when I'm recording the voice. Mainly so I don't have copyright hits. <laughs> but I am actually listening to today. I, got, I pulled up some of the oldies like Don Williams. Oh my gosh. I am so digging it. So some days we have days where we just listen to some old, old country. And I haven't listened to this kind of music in a long time. It was some of my dad's favorite music. All right, so I'm going to pull this out here a little bit. So I'm going over some of the blue that I painted. But since I have an opaque color, it's working for me. And I can see that I'm going to add some more blues. I'm going to cover up some of this stuff that I've done here. There's a whole lot of dark value in here. So I'm not really sure what I'm doing down here yet. So we'll get there. So there's going to be a lot more dark values. Okay. Stop for just a second. Oh, brush. And resume. Okay. So with, with this, we've got some of these lighter colors. And I'm going to go in. I'm going to try anyway with the Rosemary 8 pointed round and try to let the tip of this brush do the work for me. So I'm going to start reestablishing some of the darker values. And I'm just loading the very, very tip of this brush, if you can see. And I need to go in and just, so I'm not even breathing here, y'all. And I'm going to just pop in some of these darker values. I'm going to zone this back out a little bit. That's what happens when I do this kind of work. I'm just trying to let the brush do the work. And it will I do what I needed to do. This is actually very dark out here. So again, this combination, this color that I'm using now is ivory black. Russian blue, Van Dyke brown, and um, blue sap green. getting to get the feeling of the adjustment for the contrast. I mean, this is what I like, is the contrast. And the sticks and stuff will come in later, the trunk and everything, but I got to get this part established.
trying not to be too impasto. colors on top. Again, I'm just trying to load the tip of the brush so it's doing the work for me. And honestly, I'm still closing my eyes. <laughs> I always find it funny. I my students, um, they hear me just when I tell them, just squint a little bit, don't, you know, or most of my students are, are people my age. And uh, so we're all wearing readers and have our glasses. I said, take your readers off, just don't even wear your glasses. And, um, and that really does help. So if you're, you know, wearing readers, beginning stages of any painting you got it you really need to just let the uh, um, the shapes command you don't worry about the detail as much okay so there's a lot more dark here sources coming from is really important. It's interesting, this time of the year I am not hearing the uh, the owls that I normally hear in this tree. Um, it's usually in the, in the early spring and fall that I hear them. And it's usually right at dusk, dusk or dawn. And since we're really just, by the time I got to this tree, Lately, in the summertime, sunrise has already occurred. And uh, so if they were hooting, I don't hear them anymore. So I am creating some of my little windows, if you see. these to be pretty intensely dark. I'm going to add a little bit more of my Prussian blue right on top. It's feeling pretty good. Clothes and I'll keep moving through this. But basically, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and expedite it so you don't have to sit there and watch me do each little tiny, tiny piece. So I feel like the, the trees are a whole lot more established. I gotta go in and clean some stuff up. So I am going to go in with my sky color. And if I can go in and put some little, little areas in, like I know that this little here, I'm gonna go in with this gray color that I made and suggest that this is, just cleaning that up. I don't need that there. So if I get any of the green on, I gotta be really careful not to run it into my sky. I don't want this. So I'm using a, um, this is number five ivory pointed round. Again, trying to let the, the, um, the brush do the work. I'm not pushing hard. might even lighten up some of the areas. Because again, what is it I like? Contrast. Oops, sorry, 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 sorry. Same here. Go 
coming in here. And if I need to add some of the pinks in here, that's the fun colors. wiping my brush when you see my brush disappear it's going down below <laughs> where I have wiping towels I just wipe a lot of paint off so I'm gonna go in and kind of clean up some of the edges here and I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the cerulean blue and titanium white mixture here areas here. You know, a lot of times you're going to have a lot of interior aspects of this. I'm trying to make my windows as clean as I can. Just spotting it in there. Now, I do have a trunk that will be going in here. So for my um, trunks, I'm going to mix a color that is mainly, um, it's um, ultramarine, no, I'm sorry, it's white and it is pale violet and Van Dyke brown. And I'm using, you know, just the lower part of the trunks is this color. It's that very cool color. And then I'm using my paint scraper to kind of cut out where I'm going to be putting some whether it's branches or other trunk areas or whatever I have here in this painting, I, I'm going ahead and using the paint scraper. It's such a wonderful tool to be able to just take off the paint like this and make my little gnarly branches of my pine tree. Now I'm popping in a little bit of cool greens that would be the lower the lower foliage of the pine trees, the part that the sun did not actually illuminate. So, you know, I'm just, and I'm using the tip of that brush. I'm using a pointed ivory and it's not a very small brush, but it's doing the trick because it has such a nice, nice chisel, chiseled little point there. And I'm getting in there and putting in all the little dark values and moving all around the piece, but I'm get, trying to get in the lighter valued cool foliage.
I'm looking at my trunk up in here and I, I'm going to do something. I, like I said, I don't usually do it this way, but I'm working in reverse. I want to go ahead and get my light warm values in. So I'm really washing out my brush. Um, this little pointed round, uh, number five, rosemary pointed round ivory. I, I want to use this one. I want to get in the light colors. And I'm going to go with the medium light. And I am mixing the a little bit of, um, oops, we'll put this up here. Let's see if you can see here. Um, over here, I'm just mixing a little bit of the um, Italian brown ochre and yellow ochre together. And go in with some of the warmer light colors. There we go. So I'm going to use the tip of my brush again. And I'm going to zoom it out a little bit. And I think I need it a little bit more intense. So I keep picking up some of the green and that's a bad, that's a no, no. So wipe your brush off because I do not want to muddy up this color. That's why I wanted to go in. So some of these smaller trunks, I'm going to have to go in with a smaller brush. I'm going to go ahead and hit some of these, the same colors in here. Okay. All right. So I'll have to go in with a much smaller brush. Um, but I like the warmth. Um, I can't do what I want to do. All right, so there's also some, so with that same color I did earlier over here, I, I, I steady my hand. I put my hand down and lean on my own hand. So oftentimes when I'm doing this kind of stuff, I don't breathe. Now, there would be some shadows and some highlights too. So where I have this mass underneath here, put some darker values. So I'm gonna grab just a little bit of the um, ivory black. Oops, ivory black, I gotta, I gotta cool that down. I was putting Van Dyke brown and for some reason it's really warm, okay. I am not getting this here. Let's see, I gotta really look at this. So I'm putting a little bit of darker value down here on this trunk of the tree because it's really getting underneath the light. So I got to do the same thing on this. Even though I don't really see this trunk um, and I've kind of made it up, I kind of have to do the same thing. I wanted that fat. So I can always correct if I got it too fat. 
No problem, we'll just cut it in on this side. Same thing, I could do it on this side as well. It's time for lunch, folks. Now, I've gotten those. It's, it is warm. Do you know what, guys? I'm going to play on this warm. I'm, I'm grabbing a little color. This is known as, a, um, let's see if I can pull it over here. This is Windsor Yellow. It is called Windsor Yellow Deep. And it's kind of like a CAD substitute. A lot of, lot of um, brands are trying to get away from using CADs, but I'm going to pop that down in there because I think it's going to just make it even warmer and nicer. That's, that's making me happier. So I've got to put some dark values in some of these areas, but put this in where I can put it in. I'm using a number one pointed red dot. Since I'm putting that in there, I'll put some over here too. a lighter version on some of just the lighter version of what we were working with before. Taking the white, just kind of hitting it. So it should blend. a little bit so I'm keeping it cool on the bottom half of the tree here right underneath here Just give it a little bit of warmth underneath some of these.
is going to kind of suggest that there's other branches and stuff. If you look a little deeper, you might see stuff. And that's the thing. You want your, your viewers to be able to look a little deeper. Singer and I went for a walk and it was really hot. Taking a little bit of the brown, Italian brown ochre. So I want the transition to be a little bit softer. today and so she and my mom came by which was kind of fun. So we got to visit for a little bit. All right I don't want to do too much on that. Okay so now the other tree. Since I made a lot of this up I kind of have to do the same thing on this one. There's, you know, branches, things you might have missed if you didn't look a little bit closer. And with this brush, I can do a lot of the little details. Now, there's going to be some lightening up in some areas here, too. But I still want to try to figure out what I'm doing with this bottom part of the painting. So, I do like that I've got my warmer aspect of this, these trees, but the sun is hitting it. Now, it looks very, very distinct. But we're going to, you know, we'll see what else we can do. I'm gonna grab some more of this uh, color since I've got this little brush out and just kind of tighten these little pieces up. If I zoom in a little bit for you. There we go. And you can see. Just a little bit of the uh, Italian green umber. I'm sorry, not green umber, the brown umber. And some of this, it looks like it's probably end up using some more of that yellow.
what other light values I need to put on the light part of the tree. Let's check it out. I make just make basically the same color, just a little warmed up. I'm gonna try some. I'm gonna take that color and add some of this yellow to it. So I'm, I'm taking the color that we originally made that had the chromium oxide in it, and I just added a little bit of that Windsor Newton um, yellow. And it's just called Windsor Yellow Deep. This is what it looks like. It's really hot out, folks. I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of white in it as well. I may use this color on some of the interior aspects of this. Some of it looks like it could have a little bit of the when you really start studying it, it looks like it could have some of the uh, the Italian brown ochre in it as well. Yeah, the Italian brown ochre in this um, Windsor yellow makes for really hot color. Oh, I like it. So this picture, this photo reference was taken in my neighborhood. So yeah, there was houses all around and there's a street and a sidewalk and all that good stuff. I am making, I want this to be like it's in the woods someplace else. So I'm going to probably put a dead grass color down here. And being that it's below where the light is hitting it, I've got to keep everything cool down here. And that's gonna, you know, so I'll be able to put some other things in here, uh, but I'm not really sure how, and I wanna stay with, you know, I gotta keep, you know, I've gotta be thinking about composition. And you know how sometimes I just kinda jump in here and start winging it. And I don't really have a plan other than I really wanted to paint these trees. So I'm gonna take some titanium white, and I'm gonna take some of this gold green As I'm speeding up uh, the uh, video here, I'm taking the gold green titanium white and I'm having to put a little bit of pale violet to get that proper grass color. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and brush it in. And I wanna keep it soft in the background. So this brush, the 279 series um, brush here is doing a great job because you can see how it makes it very soft in the back. It's blending into some of that dark dark paint and it just makes for a believable uh, grass in the background. So 
So I thought about making some rocks. I don't really just, and I want to kind of make the, um, I know this looks weird at first, but this is just where the rocks are going to go. This is, you know, this looks strange. I, I had gone with a different idea of what I initially thought I was going to do. So it's almost like a, a cropping, an outcropping of rocks. Um, that I think will make it a little bit more interesting. So let's see where I can go with that. I'm gonna take some Cad Red and mix um, Ivory Black. And the reason I'm doing that is most of my browns, anyway, that I have are semi-transparent. And since I'm painting rocks underneath um, I need them to be a little bit more opaque. And I've painted over this gray color and I like what I did here, I think. Um, but I just need it to be darker. So I wanted my rocks to be kind of mossy. I don't know. I just was I was just feeling the green. Uh, of course, these rocks are just kind of coming out of nowhere. So um, you know what? If I want mossy rocks, I'm going to have mossy rocks. So I'm, um, but I'm adding a little bit of um, uh, light areas, kind of grays, just just to establish the rocks and going back and putting some other values because I really wasn't sure about that bush in the corner anyway. So. Um, I'm, I'm kind of establishing things or re-establishing some other things, but, uh, yeah, I like how this is feeling and I'm, you know, using my paint scraper, creating some more little branches and twigs and, uh, just more interest in the piece. Okay. So I'm taking some some king's blue and i'm popping it into this and i'm i'm making some of the foliage that might be if this was the pine tree you know in the cool section or the cool area It's interesting how this kind of lightens up on the tips here <laughs> because it's um, it's the it's the sky. I am going to go in with a very light uh, green and yellowy combo in some of these areas, suggesting that this is. Oops, let's see if I can make it happen.
just kind of suggesting that this is some little bush or tree over here, and it's, I'm not really wanting to put a lot of detail in it, but I do want to give it some, <laughs> give it some value and light. mixed some yellow ochre and some Italian brown ochre and white the, and I am using the Shiraz sword brush to create the grass in the foreground so you can see that the backdrop with that kind of light grayish green grass is 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 it does create that depth in the background but this light colored uh, warmer grass in the foreground creates the depth at this point of the painting, I'm really just looking for little places where I can add some interest. And um, I really like the grass here, and I, and I kind of like the rocks now a little bit better too. I'm just taking a little bit of um, the uh, Italian green, I'm sorry, the Italian brown ochre, I'm just creating a little bit of interest here and there. Um, Actually, take a, uh, a little bit of that. Just put, pretending we got soil, little bits of soil and stuff like that in here. But I'm just kind of looking to see what else needs to be done. I'm still thinking I need to do something in here, and I'm not really sure what. <laughs> um, I probably just need some smaller brushwork in some of the um, little areas in here. Uh, some darker values into this. I'm gonna go up on this as if it was just another, maybe it's a small, um, shrubby looking little pine tree or something over here. Like I said, some of, after, after some point, you know, you start making stuff up a little bit and uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now and I don't want to overwork it. So I am going to take my small brush and I may actually sign it over here in the rocks. going to just kind of do a little detail as if it, it it's still the you know the pine tree but it is the it's in the cooler section of the tree nothing there <laughs> I'm just mixing it up I'm just making stuff up at this point so I was just trying to add just a little detail-y it's definitely the cooler section of the tree and you know, I told you at some point, maybe the trees are actually touching and I'm not really sure which tree is touching and who. So I need to put some more dark values back in too, I think. In the original photo reference, there's a lot of windows back here, but Some 
more dark values in here. So I'm kind of re-establishing this little limb. about there folks and this was just kind of a really kind of an interesting study because I didn't know what I was going to be doing when I came in this morning I really didn't until I saw it on my walk and you know what guys when you're if you're ever having a day where you can't you're not inspired to paint anything you just can't find it and we all get there sometimes. And I really didn't know what I was gonna do today. I knew I needed to do something. I just didn't know what it was gonna be. This showed up on the walk and I was really glad that it did. And it's not like I don't pass this tree every day. It's just the way the sun was hitting it, how half the tree was so illuminated from the sun coming up. And it was beautiful. And. Uh, Hopefully that's what I've captured here. I, of course, a lot of this is made up. The rock, out, the rock outcropping is all from my imagination. Um, but I like it. I like that. And there might be um, you know, a little bit more. And my colors are starting to get muddy too, so. Um, Just trying to add a little bit more interest in some of these rocks. Not all the rocks would be that mossy, I don't think, but I <laughs> just kind of had fun with the green. of the might not be lit up yet remember original time of the day was sun up so you know I'm it, it, always the interesting thing is what do you name a painting and I may call this one whatever time stamp was on my phone at the time that I took this photograph maybe what it's called um, all right so I'm just kind of looking around at this point I just kind of looking I'm just looking and it needs a little bit of something over here Let's see if there's any other yeah there's some bright branches that are gonna be coming here So yeah, the, the branches are kind of illuminated on the upper part of this tree. And I like that. I'll go ahead and make it a little bit more distinct. Some of the areas. So this is what makes a painting fun.
like I said, this one we kind of made up some of the stuff. And there was little bumps of color kind of coming down the tree. Flashes of color is what makes it so fun. Now, pine trees do have a lot more color in them than, especially when the light hits them. <laughs> I like this too. I like that little area. And I'm just popping so little. Because the light would be hitting that a little bit. So I'm just gob, I'm picking a little, little glob of paint. Making our little blob of paint do the work. This, whatever this bush is that I put in here, just like I did here, I need to also make it a little bit warmer. I'm picking up the light too, just a little bit. dark values back here that I probably need to be putting in. So I'm going to grab that. put in a little bit of um, light in here. And 
Just hitting this a little bit, just putting in little details where I can. Okay, folks, now I'm just kind of splitting hairs. I'm just looking for little things, and I think I need to know when to stop. So, oh, it's, it's clouds. I wanted to do something, illuminate the clouds just a little bit more while I still have battery on both the phone <laughs> and my uh, iPad. Let's see, I think there is a little bit more light I'm going to put a clean white down and I'm going to put a clean yellow whoopsie where did that go I just had a big clump of white paint just fall down someplace okay I may put just a little bit of um, warm yellow in the clouds I've got the pinks yeah but Put a little bit of yum, uh, lemon yellow out, just a tiny bit, and there is a like a warm pink in here. If I, I'm gonna go ahead and just get a whole little different pink brush. Um, Is this pinkish color, but it's it's a little bit warmer, so yeah, that's it. So I took a little bit of the uh, the lemon yellow Michael Harding and the brilliant pink Michael Harding and titanium white, just kind of made almost like a fleshy tone. And I'm trying to try to illuminate the tops of these clouds. And it seems to be on the very top. Because I guess as the sun's rising, that would make sense. If everything else above this point is illuminated, uh, so are our clouds. So this is all a very, all a prima piece. I love, love, love to see the light. And I'm using a, just a little Series 81 Pure Sable. I just, um, needing a soft brush. And I'm pretty much, I think we're almost done, guys. Now 
I like to take a step back off my piece and just look at it. Just look at it. Just like to take a step off. So Barbara Page, if you're listening today, Barbara's one of my members on my channel. She was asking me about my, my um, references. You can have this reference. This one was freshly taken this morning. And it is yours to use. All right, I think really like this piece. I think this, for, for it to have been just a piece that had to, I had to come up with, and basically today was almost all real time. This is what we ended up with. Now, I'll probably sign it right down here and uh, call it done. So I, get, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up, and please consider becoming a um, on my channel you'll see that there's all kinds of options there for you and um, your membership is appreciated it really does help me a lot and <laughs> uh, you know it's it keeps it keeps keeps me doing what I'm doing and if you like what I'm doing let me know and if there's something you'd like to see in an upcoming video please give me a shout out let me know what you like to see ah, that's it Voilà. And here's our finished piece and I'll bring it in close so you can see just some of the fun clouds. And I just loved how, when I saw this this morning, how the tops of the trees were illuminated. And of course, the whole bottom aspect of this painting was just kind of made up um, because it was in my neighborhood and I didn't really want to do houses and, and that sort of thing. So we just gave some mossy rock outcropping just to give the composition a little bit more weight on the side, drawing the eye down. And uh, yeah, I like how that turned out. So you can see by looking at the palette, these were our sky colors. And you can see the colors that we used the most of. Um, you know, I had a lot of uh, my warmer greens here, my cooler greens over here. And really the Windsor Yellow Deep is really what brought those trees, that upper part of the trees to life. And so if you're looking, whoops, you can't see, but it's, if you're looking at the actual photograph, you can see that there's what I'm talking about where the tr upper part of the trees are lit up, but down below it's a lot cooler. And so I wanted to be able to convey that in this piece and I think it worked. I think it worked. Yeah, wasn't that fun? I, I really did have a good time with this piece. I, I will confess, I kind of went into today's painting not really knowing what I was going to do. Because generally when I do these videos, um, I do them the week before. So I finish a piece for my YouTube channel, uh, you know, usually on a Thursday and Friday. And I didn't get an opportunity to do that last week. So it was kind of like, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And sure as anything, when I was on my walk, the inspiration hit me like a thunderbolt when I saw this beautiful photo reference. You know, the, I, I can share the photo reference. So here's the, the actual reference. And you can see how the light was just really just pouring in on the top portion of the, uh, the trees. And, you know, interesting, uh, when we're walking in the wintertime or in the fall and spring when it's still dark out, those trees often will have, um, there's owls in them. <laughs> and I will hear them going, hoo, hoo, hoo. and so it's uh, not so much in the summertime, but uh, yeah, we've been, yeah, I used to listen to a lot of owls in those trees. So I've always known about them, but it wasn't until today that I was actually inspired to paint them. So I hope you had fun. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about anything I covered in today's 
uh, painting video, please uh, don't hesitate. Go ahead and leave it in the comment section and I'll get to you. And know that also in the description of this video, we'll have all the links to a lot of the brushes that I was using and uh, all kinds of good stuff. Know that I do have an upcoming workshop. It is painting birds and botanicals and that's coming up very, very soon. It's in October. I'll also leave that in the description and uh, yeah. Oh, and you can become a member. That's in the description too. But you can see if you look, if you look like right down there, you'll see, I guess it's over here, the little join button. There's a little join button down there. You can hit that and there's a lot of options for you there. Uh, I really have been enjoying getting to know my uh, members on my channel. So yeah, why don't you join the fun and uh, you'll get to see what that's all about. So again, from Kingsport, Tennessee, I wanna say thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.